you know, it just depends. Ready? Yep. Okay, so good evening. Um, I call this work workshop session to order. I have the request from Chautauqua County Women's Action Group to use the gazebo for the 20th of this month of April uh, 2018. I want to cover this know that. Um, hang on one second on that sure. one. This require action tonight. No. So. no, 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 no. This, this isn't a board meeting. Meeting is next week. So. Next week, yes, okay. Yeah. The, this is kind of one that's like the last one that we were talking about last week. Right. Oh. With the passing out of the water. Oh, is it? Except I, it's not related to the non fed fest. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not Fred. So people fast. can just gather no. in the park and do this if they want to without necessarily. Right. It doesn't need a res resolution to do it. Because it doesn't require so, anything uh, from. Sort of like the last no. one. Uh, at, you know, I'll leave that up to the attorney because uh, we, what we discussed last week exa is right. exactly that. But, yeah. I think it requires notification to the police department, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're notified on all these things. Yeah. We don't need a resolution to notify the police department, do we? No, no. 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 We just. They'll know that it's going to be going on in the park. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to draw. You should read it. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think you're right. But I think it's kind of the same. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, it, at the the center connection, we're trying to um, make it a little more uh, formal because over the last few meetings uh, last year, uh, many people came and many people brought ideas uh, about the. Um, central connection, uh, which is the connection between, between the city of Dunkirk, the village of Fredonia, and uh, the State University of New York at Fredonia. And this is an, uh, a memorandum of understanding that we um, agreed on to bring to our boards and discuss it a little bit. Uh, basically, I mean, please read it so we can adapt it next week basically is supporting each other, um, trying to find uh, common interests, trying to find um, uh, funding opportunities uh, to support some projects, uh, see where we can cooperate uh, always with the Central Connection, Central Avenue um, as a uh, common denominator for all of this. Um, and also to support each other when one or the other is seeking funding. So it doesn't include any kind, it doesn't involve any kind of monetary um, involvement by the, uh, by the village or um, anything like that. It's just a general memorandum of understanding. In I've together. attended uh, two of these meetings uh, over the last two years. And I recall a proposal to hang banners the full length of Central Avenue from the Dunkirk Pier to uh, Barker Common mm -hmm. along on the telephone poles. I don't see any mention of that. In, in this it's not. It's not uh, mention of that because this is, this is just a general thing saying yes. that the three communities basically are going to cooperate, looking for our right. funding, looking for common projects, supporting each other uh, into becoming like one uh, area pretty much. Yes, uh, the uh, project with the banner still on the agenda? The project on the banner, yes. And actually, it's um, um, the city of Dunkirk was awarded $2.5 million from the Downtown Revitalization yep. Initiative, and they are giving us some money to, to do the, the whole length of, of Central Avenue. So, Very interesting. Yes. Huh. As a, uh, I mean, we gave them a uh, letter of support for that. I supported. Um, when I was there, um, so in that good spirit, I suppose. Yes. So um, unless you have a problem, I would like to uh, pass it next week, uh, so I'll be able to sign, sign it. Uh, now, I'm supposed to put together uh, three people for steering committee, and I already conducted another two uh, persons from the village that I know they have the very enthusiastic 
about common projects. They're very enthusiastic about the village. They love the village. And that's going to be in addition to myself. Any questions? Right. So that's that. And then, um, Mr. Asset, if you don't mind, let's go to the meeting procedures. Because really, the roundabout is kind of a report that you have to give to the board. It's not, there's no decision to be made by the board on that. I didn't, there is no decision. I would like to discuss it because there were some things that I had questions on here that. No, I understand. But because it's old business, it's supposed to, to be about something that you're going to make a decision. You can have it as a report and then you can still discuss it. Oh, okay. We'll go to meeting procedures then. That's yeah. fine. So let's go to the meeting procedures. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, do you want to give us a... Uh, oh, Mr. Essek. Yes. Uh, means. My first mm -hmm. meeting procedures, and Dan might want to listen closely to this. Before this meeting tonight, the mayor, Trustee Linden, Trustee Christina, Trustee Ferris, were in the mayor's office, the door closed meeting. Uh, for some period of time. I don't know if that's considered an open meeting. A that's a caucus, Mr. Esther. You can ask me. You don't have to go to the attorney. I'm asking that's the a attorney. Caucus. Thank you. Well, you can ask me first. What oh. was that? So I honestly don't know what was being discussed. I mean, they could have been talking about coffee. I, I, I can't say when, that based on that information. Is it that when you have more than two trustees <clears throat> in a room that you're obviously, I don't know what they're discussing, but that constitutes a quorum, three trustees for a meeting? Well, the mayor is correct in terms that there is a caucus exception if they're all belong to the same party. I don't, I don't, you know, profess to be an expert. I called the uh, election commissioner about it, and he gave me the rules. So, yes, by all exception. means, you can call them. To the general. Wow, not very transparent. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. What can he go on? Like what? It was in the office. The, the door was the closed. Door. Nobody yes, else was. The window was, was open, so everybody <laughs> saw us there. <laughs> okay. And the caucus is recognized by the U.S. Constitution, or oh, not Constitution, but laws. So there is a law. So you're holding a caucus, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as far as meeting procedures, we discussed those last week, and I have some thoughts on uh, the draft that was presented to us, if I may. Uh, uh, First of all, during last meeting, and, uh, it, was, it was roughly 30, 30 minutes and 45 seconds into the uh, meeting, I was talking uh, about some old business, and uh, it was either old business or new business, I can't remember what it was, but it was business pertaining to the agenda. And uh, I didn't hear it until I, I watched the program on YouTube but I believe this is a Board of Trustees meeting. We're uh, able to discuss uh, concerns and anything of that nature at a meeting, openly in an open meeting. And at that, at that particular point, 30 minutes and 45 seconds, uh, you said, I don't know to whom, and it was very clear, you said it twice that uh, he's taking over the meeting. I have no intention of taking over the meeting, but if I have concerns and questions, I believe that comment was inappropriate and uh, not necessary. Um, I, I believe we, uh, any of the trustees, if we have any questions, and I apologize for having so much on the agenda, but I did, and it was uh, not let me, to Let me tell you meeting. why then, because I, I, I have no problem saying why. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that uh, five, four out of five, or five out of six, of whatever you discussed about, could have been done by a phone call. For example, you came to an open meeting, Mm -hmm. to ask me to put something on Facebook. You can call me, Mr. Essek. That's easy. Okay, I asked you to do that within, uh, it was a month already, and it uh, And I done. didn't do it the first time. Well, I apologize for that from the deepest of my heart. But you can call me again and say, Mayor, you know, what's going on? Why is not there? That I was I did for send an email. I'll have to check. I no, you did not send me an email. Actually, you never answered my emails, Mr. Essek. I don't so, have my emails answered either, uh, Mayor Landis. Um, so but anyways... Anyhow, the meeting procedure, the draft of this policy here... But that was, that was my point. That's that. Okay, super. 
this draft here. Does everybody have that draft in front of them from the previous meeting? No? I don't. Do yeah. you want me to go take copies of that? I recall it. I, I read it. Okay. So when I, I, I made some that comments to Drew Garner. Mine's marked up, but if you have a non-marked up copy, that would be even great. Do you have one? I didn't bring it with me, mm -hmm. but I did read through it. Mark, Mark, you want a copy or not? No, I, I recall mm -hmm. it. I've okay. memorized it. Yours is clean, right? Yeah, here's is clean. We have a break. I'm, I'm going to need everybody to give me their 9380 for the ads. We want to pay this this ad. Okay. How much is it? 9380 a piece. Yes. Yeah. And who do I make a check out to? Uh, just made a village of Fredonia because okay. we're going to send a, for, uh, a village check. Okay. I know. Yeah. 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 Make it 198. <laughs> Drop off tomorrow. 9380, you said? 9380. He just told me 108. <laughs> this is for the basketball? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a yeah. basketball thing. Do you live up in the hills? Yeah, I get it to you tomorrow morning. That's fine. Oh, yes. Okay. Get the I always do that. I finish my text. And then I can't pay everybody. <laughs> and then I go to the bank back and forth to I, pay everybody back. You know, I don't well, pay that much stuff by checking. That much yeah, that's the point. That's why. Yeah. That's yeah, why. I, I do it. most of this stuff through the bank. I won't go to like the individual website. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Individual website. No, no, but they take that in my account from the bank. Yes. That's how I do it. Yeah. So I never think about sex. Yeah, that's the way I am. <laughs> you know, then when you, work, you run out, you go, oh, God, do I even have all these checks? And that's with the school. They ask for, for money, and I can send a check. Or for my cleaning lady, they have to ask for money. Yeah. I think it's more money. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, uh, the rest of the board here, the draft policy here, um, it was put into, or not, it was uh, suggested because of uh, the resolutions that were being brought at the last moment. And it, it addresses that, but addresses some other things in here as well. Um, the first section there, uh, whereas and down to number three, it seems that that's what we kind of do currently um, without with the exception of the cutoff date of Wednesday. And that's kind of, I, I believe that sounds correct, uh, that it, but it'd be given to the clerk as it has been in the past and should continue to be because of the fact that the administrator clerk treasurer is a constant. The administrator is constant between administrations. And you know, um, although the, this current mayor may have the time in the day to do that, even though it's a part-time job, the future mayors may not. So if we put that duties to the mayor to uh, get uh, entertain But future sponsors. mayors maybe have um, the, the ability to get a secretary or Rick to have a secretary. 
Uh, I mean, using the, the making suggestions for future mayors, it's it's a little at least a little a little bit well, spooky to me. I just don't understand why if uh, the current resolutions get given are given to the clerk currently why that isn't continued to be happening with the exception. And still it's going to be, they're going to be given to the clerk. I'm just going to look for, for sponsors. So Rick doesn't have to do that. Should because the Rick is overworked. A, should the sponsors be from uh, whatever committee or area that the uh, trustees are involved with? Like if it's a streets uh, resolution that the whoever is on the streets department or a parks department, if it's a parks resolution, that those people are on the are sponsoring and seconding the resolutions? Let me just offer on, on this. Okay. Um, the, obviously, like the mayor said, the clerk would receive the, you know, the resolutions mm -hmm. to put together. But finding sponsors for the resolutions, and, and nothing, against, nothing against the clerk, doing a great job with, with almost no staff, but it really goes above that pay grade okay, to seek out sponsors or resolutions for different things. Now, you could do it with committees and things, but at the same time, You've also got the reality of who can I get hold of? And possibly, I mean, the committees are assigned by interest, but also necessity. You know, doesn't necessarily mean that just because I sit on the you know public works committee that I'm going to be in favor of a resolution or willing to sponsor a resolution for the streets department. You know, these these are all things that decisions that need to be made, and someone needs to call around and get these you know get these sponsors if necessary if it hasn't come from the trustees initially. And that really is, you know, that that's an administrative, uh, that's an administrative position. And I, you know, I know the mayor in Dunkirk does it, the mayor in, in Silver Creek does it, or did it back when I was there. Uh, it's something, you know, it's ministerial in nature, but it's something that that the mayor is usually taxed with. So it's not that's not unusual. Uh, I didn't come up with that just for Fredonia. That's no. just kind of the way it's done. Okay, that's understandable. Uh, my questions under the public comment and for the. Our opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. Discussion. Uh, the, the section of the draft that addresses public comment is covered under village law already. Uh, it, it doesn't. We didn't specifically have in our charter, but under village law, it's very clear under guidelines for discipline or for public comment. Mm -hmm. um, when you have one person. Uh, I feel it's uh, dictating whether, in, in their discretion, whether somebody has, is speaking uh, on their behalf or in, on behalf of a group. It's, I, I think it's borderline censorship, dictatorship during a regular meeting. Anything and anybody, anything can be asked by anyone. Um, there, there was never a, a, um, a subject. Uh, uh, regulation except for when we had a tr uh, workshop session and you can only speak the public can only speak in regards to what was on the agenda in the workshop right, that's what I thought. Yeah. but this is the public portion of the meeting they can speak on whatever subject it doesn't have to be part of the agenda or anything else if somebody wants to come here and, and talk about a problem they've had that's not on our, uh, our agenda I believe you yeah, should open. be able to do yes. that. Yes. That's, that's, that's what it is. This doesn't you determine, you determine no the time so somebody can speak the, for 15 well, minutes. The mayor shall keep in good order and may require a speaker to stop speaking if remarks are in poor taste, slanderous, or not germane yes. to any action taken or contemplated by the board. Uh -huh. And let me, let me be, okay. provide some clarity there. Okay. Okay. Uh, basically, that's the, that's the time when the meeting has gone off the rails. All right, and we need to stop whatever's going on. Um, having that as a rule of procedure that's read at the beginning of the meeting lets people know that they need to keep this civil, they need to keep this professional. This is, this is you know, a public meeting. Um, that language, I, I plagiarized the living heck out of it, that <laughs> is exactly uh, the Dunkirk language as it used to be. I don't know if it is currently the Dunkirk language. Um, but that is the language that is used by several boards. Basically, it provides for two things. It provides that somebody's not going to get up and give a 10-minute a, a lecture on witchcraft in the park, okay, because it doesn't have anything to do with us, and it's way too long, and it doesn't belong here. Also, it keeps us from having someone come 
and takes it. We had somebody come in and uh, take an issue with one of the village employees that was really a personnel matter that should be discussed not in the public forum on television. That gives the, the mayor who presents the meeting the ability to say, oh, time out, we're not doing that, check the rules of procedure. Right? Also, the time limits, I mean, there, there basically is two sections to this policy that I'm proposing as it is. The first one uh, goes to the resolutions and getting some type of order for that so there's not surprise before the meetings and, and we can become, uh, the goal would be that when something is, is on the agenda that most of the time there's action that night because everybody's had plenty of time to look at it. Um, what, what's happening a lot of times is we get something, we talk about it a little bit, we punt it down the road. This would help to keep things moving like that. But the second part of the proposal uh, really talks about the, the order of the meetings, the procedure of the meetings. Um, and I know that the, in the charter it specifically asks the mayor or charges the mayor with um, keeping good order and, and, and basically delegating over the meetings. This is just some guidelines that other mayors in other places, uh, when the mayor doesn't run it, a lot of times the, the clerk runs the meetings. All right, this is, there's not a lot of discretion that goes into this, and, and if you've ever been in a meeting where this language has been invoked, it's obvious to everybody in the room that it needs to be done. I mean, it's not done lightly. You're not going to tell somebody that's a little off the reservation to, you know, stop. But it does, I think the time limits are important. I think it keeps everybody moving in the right direction. Also, the public comment is supposed to be just public comment. A lot of times, you know, we get in here with people come in and they want, they, they're upset. They want to engage different mm -hmm. specific board members. They want, to, they want to complain, they want to put you guys on the spot. Maybe you don't have the information. Maybe this is the first time somebody's mentioned it. Maybe this has just come to your attention. Or maybe we've had the discussion 400 times and it's just not going anywhere. Um, this helps to limit that and keep us moving in a positive direction so we're not beating the same dead horse for half an hour with the back and forth between the members and the public. Okay. Just, we're not limiting, we're not saying you can't talk about things as long as, you know, it, it's something that belongs in the meeting, generally. Right? We're not limiting what people can discuss. If they, have, if they have concerns, absolutely, that is the time to bring them, even if they're not on the agenda or whatever. But if they're not germane to any action taken or contemplated by the board, why are we discussing it? Okay, I so guess. it's not currently on the agenda you're talking about, not well, not no, those. you could discuss things that aren't on the agenda, like you said. Yes, but I mean, when you say it's not germane to the actions taken by the board, uh, uh, something that we can be in control of, you're saying. If it's not in something that we can be uh, germane, I just... Uh, um, if it's not relevant. Relevant to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's, not, if it's not a matter that's relevant to the board, I mean, I, I, could, I suppose a member of the public could come here and talk about nuclear weapons if we wanted to. Uh, it wouldn't be prohibited for that, but... Under that rule, you could say, okay, that really isn't something we do here. You know, we don't, this, the Fredonia Village Board doesn't discuss global warming, so what's the point in addressing it during the public comment? Okay. I and just, that's kind of where I'm trying to focus everybody. I just hope it doesn't go to the point where if something's not of the, uh, I guess, the popular opinion of, of this board or the mayor that it doesn't get stifled. Well, like I said before, when you, when you, if you've ever been in a meeting that is required, a, a speaker to see speaking basically at that point the only person in the room that doesn't know they need to shut up is the person that's talking so I don't think that's going to become an issue and if it did you know you guys could always amend this later uh, if you look the, the procedure we did under the enabling legislation of uh, chapter 63 which allows this board by rule by resolution to adopt these policies. We don't, it's my position, we don't need a local law. We don't need to change the local law and have a public hearing every time you tweak this a little bit. Uh, I would see this as being a real good start, but if we get down the road six months and it's not working or there's some other detail, we could definitely tweak it and it could be done by resolution. I have to say I like really the fact that the, the board the members of the board are um, able to offer their position regarding their vote on a specific resolution. That's, I think that's really good. Yeah. Well, and I think it's something, you know, if you've ever watched the Dunkirk meetings, uh, I mean, that's the way they run it. When, if, if I have basically as a board member, I have three times to speak. Um, I have the workshop, I have the portion of the meeting where, you know, boards and committees, 
I can, you know, I can raise issues there, and I have time prior to the vote on the resolution. Um, so basically, it gives people more opportunities to speak than they have right now, but it focuses the discussion so it doesn't turn into a, a debate. It just basically, okay, I'm, you know, I'm voting yes, and these are my reasons why. Or I have to vote no because of this, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. It's more like Robert's Rules of Order, that yeah. section there. Yeah, I mean, if you, it, like, I, I have gone through the, the code with a fine tooth comb for all these little tidbits, okay? The code is a real interesting. Um, the code is a real interesting thing. No matter what municipalities you look in, we've got some. We got some great laws on the books here in Fredonia. You know, the um, the penalty for flying a kite in the village is exactly the same penalty for opening a brothel. All right, we got a, we got a couple. We got a couple things we might want to update. All right, and for all those of us that were thinking about bathing naked in Canada Way Creek, you got to wait till after nine o'clock. That's what it says. All right, but. This thing, this thing, there is nothing in the code or the policies that put any of this on paper, and I think it's just going to, it's going to open up more discussion, but more beneficial discussion in less time. Okay, sounds good. That's, that's my, that's the goal. Resolution then? Sure. Both, yes. of, both of these items actually. I guess are mm -hmm. two, the two items. Sounds good. For next meeting to put on the agenda for resolution. If no one has any problem, I, I really would like to see the, the procedural enactment sponsored by the entire board. I think that would be appropriate. I think it shows everybody's on board and you know this is our these are our rules. I'd be good with um, that. Me too. If no one has less problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, I lost my paper. Where did I go? Oh, okay. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Um, and then about committees. Ms. Resser. What am I going for right now? Yeah, please. I, I didn't hear what you said. Committee, oh, committee reports. Committee reports. <coughs> Okay, uh, the roundabout, that's been a, a debatable subject in our community. I had originally brought it up at a meeting on January 22nd, 2018, that I was starting a petition. At that time, I was told, told by Trustee Linden that it's a state project and not a village project. And at that time, Mayor Landis interjected and brought our discussion to an end. It's kind of funny, previous to that, there was a, a meeting held by the DOT that the mayor Trustees Linden and Trustees Jones attended on December 7, 2016. And we most recently had a meeting here with the DOT that <coughs> myself, Mayor Landis, Trustees Linden, and Trustee Christina attended. Mm -hmm. um, at this meeting, I was kind of concerned because there was a portion where a resident spoke about the center of the roundabout and, and what was in the middle of that. And uh, the engineer in charge, Sanjay Sin, project engineer in charge of this project stated that Mayor Landis could provide some more details. I guess my question is, and I would like to be privy to the details of that, is because I was told that it's not a village issue, it's a state issue, but we are attending meetings, and, and be honest with everybody, it is a village issue, it's a community issue. Half that intersection is in the village of Fredonia. I agree with you. It's I'm a just village saying issue. we don't have jurisdiction over it. We have interest, of course. We pass by that that We do have jurisdiction and part of that intersection. And going down Route 60, it's a village of Fredonia. We have jurisdiction in, in that area. We most certainly do. No, that's that's not our, no. If I might interject, the, the, the fact that it is on 20 and 60 takes away um, most of our say about anything. I mean, that's okay, we may not be able to have official say, but it's part of our community. We live in the town of Pomfret. That is the town of Pomfret. The village of Fredonia is within the that's town of That's what I Pomfret. say, yes. We do have so, interest, of course. Uh, but I was told this, this is not a village issue. It's a state issue. But lo and behold, the project engineer, apparently, a long time ago, we must have had some discussion on what was in the center of that. Uh, yeah, let me explain all that. Yeah, so when, like they first, when they first came here, they came to inform me, basically, and Rick, I think, was with me at the time, that this is going on. This mm -hmm. is going to go on. And then they said that they're going to hold a public hearing, a public meeting, actually, which they did right here. We were not involved. 
The only thing I did was to make sure that this room was empty. That's all. Uh, so they did that. And then they called me again, and they called actually um, the town of Pamphlet and SUNY Fredonia in a meeting when they said, you know what, the state is doing that. However, the middle, we're not doing anything. And uh, safety issue, what are they going to do, actually? They can do some very small things. They can put some plans there and leave them, which means they're never going to go back to fix them. They're never going to go back to, to water them. Um, it's pretty much the communities from that point on. So we started a discussion as to what to put there. And my input was Excuse that me, since it's we? going. Who would be we? We started a discussion. The sure. discussion, the first discussion that I was there, uh, it was the town, the university, and myself. Nobody else. And Mr. Um, the, the engineer. And somebody from the county. That discussion went nowhere, pretty much. And then afterwards, I understand they had some discussions without me. I was not there. That was the only discussion I had. Months passed, and a, little, a few months ago, uh, I got an email saying that we have to, dis to discuss with the town what we want in the middle, and how we're going to commission it, and how we're going to pay for it, so they know what to prepare as a platform. So that's where we are. I thought that this project should be something as this is going to be a new intersection there, and a new, newly um, made intersection. And it can be something uh, like a work of art in, in welcoming people to our area. How come this wasn't like a community effort and other than yourself? Not yet. Not yet. I was not, it was not even me, actually. As I said, I was never invited. I understand the town had a few meetings. I was not invited. Well, why would the engineers say you had all the details on what was in the center? Because I was inquiring what was in the center. And the, the there is no details up to this point as to what is in the center. In the center, there's a platform. That's what I know. If you know something more, you can tell us. I, I, but this is what I know. I and I, at, I'm trying to put, yes. I was at that meeting as well. and I. I got the impression that he was saying that in a way to just try to be joking and conversational. I did not get the impression that he meant like the mayor is in charge of what's going on in the center and she's the charge she and she's going to make that. it happen. I, I, I got the, you know, I got a different impression of what he said and how he said it. And basically um, from the county, the last thing, uh, it was an email to put together a committee to decide what we're going to do for that. That's all. You want to take over the committee? By all means, you can be I part of it. I most certainly do not okay. believe it should so, be a committee. There is nothing, there's nothing shady here. Uh, actually, there's nothing going on uh, at this moment, apart of trying to find some people who have interest to serve in that committee. Okay. Well, I guess when I bring something a subject up and I'm told that it's not a village subject, I should basically mind my own business. It's a state issue that the village is getting involved in it. The villages, the town of Pomfret, and the college, the university, they're getting involved in it. So it's telling me that it is a village issue. And I just, I'm just getting tired of being told when it's something that I, I, my opinion is obviously opposite of yours on the roundabout. When I that said it, then it's not a village issue, I mean that you cannot vote on that being here or there. Even if all of us, all of us send a letter, a proclamation, a big letter that we don't agree with that, this is something that the state, specifically in my last conversation with them right before that meeting because I arranged that. I was able to go and get the room and all that. They said, we do not act on thinking or feelings. We act on data. If you don't have any data to, your, to whatever your point of view is, we're not going with that. They know there, is, there are more accidents. That's what they say. There are more accidents. From that point on, the fact that the state knows that makes them liable. That's how it was explained to me. So he said, we have to do something. So they are doing it. From that point on, we have a platform. We're going to leave the platform there, or we're going to put a nice work of art, or nice thing to, to welcome people to our community. I take it that, that my opinion is that we should put something there. Um, we should have an, an opinion, anyways, on that. So.
Well, you know what? It's too bad the state doesn't act on common sense too, because I, I mentioned to the engineers that we have a a bridge on Water Street that was built roughly 50 years ago that um, that they had data and engineers assured everybody wasn't going to be an issue. And as you know, we continually have floods, and they had uh, devastating floods there, and that was based on facts and data, but not common sense that people told the state about at that time, and that's just my issue with the I agree. I agree with that. I agree with, it, with your uh, opinion about the, the, the bridge, actually, I share it. I have no idea what they did the way they did, but on a general rule, I go with data, too. I'm a scientist. Thank you. Anybody else about that? Okay, so that's, <coughs> they they presented their case, so that's not something for me to discuss. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, if we're done with that, you allow me to um, um, say a few more things. Uh, first of all, I want to discuss the the creek and the dam that was uh, built there by some uh, trees. Uh, you know, we all got this email. Uh, by Betsy that they see has a problem. There was a dam built by uh, trunks and trees. Um, and uh, I, I was very concerned. I talked with Barry a few times. And I talked with the DC a couple of times as well. Um, apparently, the DC has jurisdiction over it. It's, uh, he over, the DC oversees um, the creek uh, from beginning to end. Now, what they told me is this, that Pretty much it's private property. Most of the creek runs inside private pro property. And because it's private property, we can't do anything about it. It's up to the private owner, individual owner, to go in and clear it up. The problem is, um, if you can go in with your bare hands and a chainsaw, they're fine. If you need to bring heavy equipment, they're not fine. They're not allowed. You have to go back and, and um, acquire a specific permit. Or now, thing, uh, and I told that to Betsy, uh, so everybody knows where we are. We don't have any kind of, of policy in the books, as far as I understand it. Maybe we're going to think about putting some policy in the books. So instead of having, like, I, I really had a lot of um, messages and emails about that from people who are very understandably uh, well concerned. So um, just wanted to, to make a I make a comment about that. Um, the observer had a, a small paragraph in the um, recollections section uh, remarking that Mayor St. George in uh, 40 years ago uh, made an approach to Senator Moynihan uh, to clear up the trees in Canada Way Creek. And I believe they did something. Am I correct? Um, um, I'm not sure if it's the same project. I know they did some stabilization of the uh, of the um, yes of the other sides. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same project. And um, as I said, I I don't know where else to go. Maybe if you want me to call Senator Young, I can do that. Um, uh, senator Moynihan was a federal senator. So be Schumer or Kirsten Brandt. So be Schumer. Yes. I'm, I'm I think the point was, uh, it, it obviously it wasn't effective because uh, we have a problem now. Mm -hmm. you know, so no policy resulted from that contact. Right, right. So oh, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Right. So um, as I said, maybe you want to think about putting um, some, some policy on the books and then inform the people, inform the, the, the public as to where we are and why and how. Um, Who would be our, our person to contact Senator uh, Schumer yes. on this? Because this is, seems like a runaround. I get it, the DEC is in control of the creek, but they're saying it's private property because your property line goes into the creek. You have humongous trees. Obviously, somebody can't just go in there by hand and they can cut up portions of a tree on their own. And but the who biggest problem liability? is, uh, you know, is it the homeowners still if they get hurt in the creek, or, or I, what was the alter the creek's 
That's what I was going to say. stuff and, and affect the, the wildlife in the creek by doing it. It's on their private property, but isn't that a public waterway? And being a public waterway, it should be maintained well, and cleared as such? I remember years ago, I was a little kid, and I remember the Army Corps of Engineers came in and they rerouted the creek down at the end of University Park. Some of you old timers might remember that. Um, because there was a constant flooding. So I don't know if we to need, stabilize the band, so that's right. what they did. Right if we need to get that to happen, to maybe go in there and dig out or widen it or do something structurally to the creek so that that doesn't continue to happen. And when we I, would obviously have to contact someone at the federal, federal level, level to do that. One um, constituent, actually, and um, um, one resident, actually, um, just brought to me this morning and said the, um, something that I knew, that the, the, the creek had changed where it was going before right. and, and now. So maybe we can have the DC come here to, uh, to verify that, and maybe they can call, call the, they can contact the, the Corps of Engineers uh, to come and do whatever they, they can do. My problem was, and I, that was my main concern, okay, so what's going to happen if those trees somehow get disentangled and come down and we have the same problem at the, at the bridge, the problem that we had the other day, the other couple of months ago? I have no answer to that. And just so everybody knows that uh, Rick and I and uh, Chuck LaBarbera were working on this uh, last week. Uh, we've contacted the DC. We've talked. We've got some other names of people that can help us. I spoke to uh, State Code with you know different issues going forward. What we need, what we have. Uh, basically, what we have is a situation that needs to be dealt with sooner rather than later. What we, what we probably need is like the you know, mayor suggested with some policies, some local laws going forward, mm -hmm. all right? But we are on it, we are talking to people, we are talking to uh, a couple people at the DEC. Uh, I know I talked to City of Dunkirk to handle you know, how they handled Crooked Brook, it's basically the same thing. Um, you know, I, I reached out to my, my contact over at uh, State Code and, and we're working together on this uh, to get something done sooner rather than later. But going forward, we probably want to consider uh, some type of local law in, in terms of that. Now, what we can do is somewhat limited by state law. And one of the things we're trying to do is get the DC, the DC to make a determination at the different portions of the creek what type of, of street, uh, creek or stream it is. And that gives us some better guidance as to what we can do and what we can't do. I mean, it's a county bridge, and mm -hmm. the, these are all kind of like, uh, they're not fixes. The only fix is replacing that bridge and removing the center section. You right. wouldn't have this problem. You could have debris because every other bridge that does <coughs> not have that center pier does not have that problem. So, I, I mean, if we could lobby our, st I don't know if it's a state deal, if it's a county bridge, but I think at the time somebody told me that it was uh, the state, was the state and he turned it over? I don't know if that's true or not. But anyhow, whoever it is, I mean, you know, they replace bridges when they're decrepit and, and broken down. But this has caused monetary losses and it's cost a life. One of the uh, uh, floods uh, after it was put in, somebody died in one of the floods. I, I can't remember which one it was. It was shortly thereafter. Somebody lost their life. They got uh, swept down the creek. And it, uh, I have an article about it and it caused over $5 million of damage. We constantly are incurring costs because of a, a defective bridge design that's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about all kinds of things to address all the debris and so forth and so on, but... Maybe our first course of action should be to contact our county legislators. I contacted the county actually about the bridge when that happened, when the flood happened, and they pretty much told me that the state put it there, and it's a brand new bridge, it's not an old bridge, and it's extremely unlike, uh, unlikely to take it down and replace it. Now, I didn't know about the fatality. Um, I, could, I could bring up the article, there was a fatality. Okay, and, and so um, if he can bring me this up, I can call them again, and then there's a liability right there, not to mention yeah, the whole I'm flood. not making anything up. Um, I mean, it happened. And so, um, for which flood, was, there have been so many. I mean, I, I mean, it was like 1979. Okay, so, so the 79, 79 flood. There, yes, yes. I, okay. I didn't know if there, because there was another flood after. It wasn't quite as bad. That's correct, but, but we had like two 100 year floods within right. a few years after yeah. it was put But we in. had one two months ago. Right, but this, the one in 1979 was, was severe. quite severe. I mean, but, yeah. for the people who had to go out 
from their houses all the, the whole night. Right. Oh, I know. That was severe enough. Right. I agree. Terrible. Yeah, I mean, we can all lobby our elected officials here at the county and state level. Can I point out that uh, the Army Corps of Engineers did uh, build uh, flood control dams at Mount Morris on the Genesee River and also in uh, uh, Kinzua. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Warren, Pennsylvania, and that uh, backs up into uh, the Seneca Nation and, and uh, New York State. So uh, the reservoir of the village of Fredonia acts as a flood control device, partially because it uh, dams uh, one of the branches of the Canaway Creek. So uh, the flooding. Uh, is not nearly what it was before 1884 because uh, when the reservoir was constructed. So, so it, you know, these are some uh, actions that have been taken. I, I personally think that uh, what would be valuable would be to uh, construct a dam, a flood control dam. Uh, with uh, rapidly closing flood grace, gates in the town of Arkwright. And that would also uh, prevent flooding of Route 60, which has been uh, persistent at the intersection with Route uh, 83. 83, right, yeah. They've worked on that. They prepared it, well, I think it still gets flooded. They prepared Calder. Calder, yeah. Well, last fall, there was a, it was closed. Yes, for six to rest. Last at, fall, at the, it was uh, simultaneously. There was flooding at, at Route 83 and Route 60, and at, at the Water Street uh, Bridge. Yeah. You know, so it's not, you know, specifically a problem uh, in the village. You know, it's a problem. You know, throughout the course of Canada Creek. So. Okay. okay so um, then let's. Let's start putting, you know, some some kind of uh, uh, policy, uh, discussing some kind of policy uh, at some point. Yes, the, the policy really is going to be um, contingent upon the information we get from the DEC and state code. Uh, we've already started to go in that direction. Okay. Once the state makes a rule, we don't have a uh, any legs to stand on. We kind of operate it with our rules in the gray area where the state hasn't already said something. So that's what I, but I am working with state code and also DC to, in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also went to the Tarwick Bay um, meeting uh, last week, and um, it was pretty much a housekeeping meeting. The only thing that I wanted to bring back is that sometimes when we're talking about investments, we're talking about investments. A couple of years ago, and, and you probably remember uh, because I wasn't here. Um, the, with a contribution by the village of $2,000, the village was going to be part of the local waterfront revitalization program. The board voted against that, mm -hmm. and um, now um, we are missing out in, in a huge amount of projects that are going to start all over the, the waterfront of the lake, and they could have come up to all the kind of white creek. Uh, unfortunately, we're not part of that, um, so we cannot apply. I asked if we um, able if we are able to go now, which is about a year and a half later, uh, and pay a little more. But um, I don't think there is any option to that. I just wanted to mention it. Can you repeat the name of that organization? Uh, Local Waterfront Revitalization Program. Is that a county program or state? I think it was a county program. Yes. Well, I think it's a state program. I is it? Say, I yeah. think it is a state program. Right? Is it state the program? ones that fund it, but it's a county program that the, that gets together. Yeah, because the the, 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 the a county committee. Because the, yeah, the update every, was given by the county the yeah, other day. Everybody so. that has frontage on some type of water yeah. waterway was so. asked to be part of this because well, so they, and they they, they pay the eighty percent. Yeah. This program pays eighty percent of whatever uh, improvements. We could make. And ours was Canterbury Creek. Right. right. Well, we need some improvements. So, <laughs> this has uh, been a program that's been in operation for at least 20 years. So. 
um, but so, this is this is a brand new thing that they do. Yeah, they, they, they periodically it revisit it and uh, like the comprehensive plans. Isn't there a possibility that we could um, new additions. be involved on as as the village itself with the state on that that program? I mean. I mean, it doesn't have to be through a committee to apply for that. They, they really didn't, uh, didn't offer me anything except the fact that um, if I wanted to go and talk to all the, the communities, because to involve us is not only going to cost much more money, it it's going to cost in time, on time, right. because they have to wait for us, let's say. Um, and anyways, that's, I just wanted to mention that. Um, another two things very quickly. Um, on Saturday, I went to dinner um, for the 150 years of Fredonia Grange Number no. One. Um, I was uh, very proud to be there. Uh, as everybody knows, Fredonia Grange Number no. One is number one in the country and indeed in the world. Uh, it was a very uh, excellent celebration. Um, uh, great people, great program, um, and uh, I just wanted to wish them the very best. They always are very involved with the community. They are always very involved with uh, the farmers, um, and it was nice to see generations of grangers really, um, really there, as well as uh, grangers from uh, um, the whole United States, the whole country. So that was really good. Congratulations, and to another 150 years. And finally, uh, we had the community cleanup yesterday, um, organized by the, the police department, and more specifically by um, Mike Hodgkin and Ben Kravitz. Thank you, thank you very much. They were able to collect um, one ton, wow. 0.7, over one ton uh, of uh, garbage. Uh, the community looks much better. It does. Uh, I was very enthusiastic, although the, the weather did not cooperate. It but it was it, it was <laughs> it was an excellent event. It was a very good event. If you're working um, hard. You, you you warmed up. <laughs> it got warmer as the day went on. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, there is another one going on actually this Sunday, uh, organized by Partners in Kind. They will um, mostly uh, go to parks. They are meeting uh, at uh, Russell Joy at I think 10 o'clock. Okay. Yes. At 10 o'clock. Sunday? Um, this Sunday. Sunday, okay. Yes, this Sunday. Now, my, uh, my proposal would be for these groups to come together and, and make sure that this is going to happen another two months, let's say, something like that, so we can keep the village um, in ship shape uh, condition. Um, I will not be able, to, unfortunately, to be there on Sunday, but good luck. Um, and please, if you have some time, just come down and, and help. So that's it. Mm -hmm. I moved it. We adjourn. Second. Trustee Bice. Aye. Trustee Christina. Yes. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Essek. Yes. Thank you.